I've been told that I have a really unusual name, so I'm just going to go by the name Abraham for this. After listening to recent stories on a couple of different channels, I decided to talk about how I grew up. Before I talk about that, I just want people to know that they should be really careful, but not terrified of the deep woods. I can't say that really terrible things don't happen out there, but it's rare. My family is what some people might call feral. They aren't actually feral. They speak and act like any other humans, but not like worldly people. That's what my family calls everyone who lives outside of the deep woods, where our homestead is. My family uses some slang words and what people would call old-timey words that I know aren't used by other people. And our way of living is different compared to how most people live. Many of my family's ways would probably seem weird to most people, and definitely like stepping back in time. Today, I'm surrounded by all store-bought items, and my life is filled with modern conveniences, and of course technology. But growing up, there wasn't much of that at all. Once or twice a year, someone in the family would be sent out to buy a few items that we needed, or purchase clothing for us. But that was really about it. I don't like using the word feral, but I understand why it's been used to describe people like my family. But it really isn't the best or most accurate word to describe people who live in the deep woods. I'm concerned that when people hear the word feral, they think we're living like animals out there. We aren't running around the woods naked and howling like wolves. I grew up around some odd people, I'll give you that. But we aren't cavemen or cannibals or insane. My family is different, though, and if they saw how I was living today, they would say that I was the crazy one, or something like that. My family and others like mine are very private, reclusive, and they don't trust worldly people. My family is very protective of what they believe is theirs, and they aren't very understanding or forgiving of people who don't know that they're trespassing. So I'm not going to lie to you, there is a danger. My family wasn't violent, but if a stranger came onto our land, they would definitely be met with a warning and possibly even some threats. Now, my family was wrong for behaving like that. They don't seem to understand that outsiders wouldn't know that we have different rules than they do. Hell, most people only see us or our home by accident, and my family didn't seem to understand that if somebody was trespassing through our land, they likely wouldn't know it. There weren't any fences or signs posted. There are some things that people believe that actually are true about how we live, and those things are why I didn't want to stay out there. I'm not saying anything bad about my family, but I wanted something different. I guess I just thought about things different than they did. My family had dealings with two other families that weren't too far from our home, just a couple of miles, I'd guess. From all I've been told over the years, our three families have been like one big family for a very long time for generations. I won't say too much about it, but you understand that only three families having babies, it just isn't a good thing. And that's one of the many reasons why I chose to leave. My family runs like its own little mini government on our land and in our homes. There's a pecking order, and you don't question it. My family isn't bad. They're not stupid. They're just ignorant of many things. For example, I didn't have any understanding at all about money until after I left. I left when I was 17, and it wasn't easy. It was the scariest, hardest choice I think I've ever made. I have brothers and sisters that are still there, but I'm glad I left. I won't lie, that first year was so hard that for a while I did wonder if I screwed up by leaving. My birth had never been recorded with the government, so I didn't have a birth certificate. And that's something I never thought about before I left. Because there were no records on me, and I never went to public school, I had to see a judge about getting proof that I was a citizen. It took a long time, but thankfully a judge did give me papers. But most people have never seen papers like these, so any time I had to show them, it caused a lot of drama. Thankfully, I was able to get a driver's license, so I don't have to show those papers from my state anymore. These days, I'm doing pretty good. 
I have a hard job with really long hours, but it pays really good, mostly because they can't get many people to do my job. There's a part of me that's kind of angry that I was born into those ways, and the other part of me realizes that my family is just afraid of what they don't understand and not strong enough to leave or change. They wouldn't admit it, but they're scared to death of the outside world. That's why they stay. At least that's what I believe. Most of the families that have homesteads like us also live, socialize, shop, and work in the city. All the things that my family would never do. Those families didn't cut themselves off completely from the outside world. My family knows about those other homesteaders who haven't cut themselves off, and they don't trust them either. Those other families live many miles from where my family lives, so they don't have to deal with each other. I'm 31 now, and my life is very different from what it once was. But enough about me. It's time to answer your questions about the deep woods. Yes, there are people in the deep woods that are like my family and a few others, and any one of them could possibly be dangerous. But most aren't. Most just think that they're defending their homes and their families, so do be careful. I do think that there are always going to be a few that are not just offensive, but in fact, actually dangerous. There was one man that I knew when I was a kid. I didn't like being around him. He seemed very dangerous to me. I had this gut feeling that he was evil. I think he wasn't right in the head. Well, he just went missing one day. He never came back from hunting, and I honestly can't say that I was bothered by that. If I ever found out that he was responsible for some really bad things, well, I don't think I'd be surprised by that at all. From the time that I was very small, I've seen some of the beings that most people don't ever get to see. What people call Bigfoot are real. I can't prove that to anyone, but I know it. They mostly keep to their own kind but a few of them have been very kind and even acted friendly towards me. Now, what I'll tell you about them is that they definitely have abilities that humans either never had or we've lost them a long time ago. I've seen what they can do. They have this powerful energy and powerful minds, and they can do things that would shock you. They can either snap a tree with their strong hands, or they can use their energy to do it. I've seen it a few times. They'll just put their hand up near a tree and it'll snap or bend without them even touching it. They can move water and air with their minds and their energy. I've seen one throw a rock without touching it. I don't think it's an easy thing for them though, because if it was easier, they would do it all the time, but they don't, at least not that I've seen. They understand our language, at least some of our common language. I think that they can understand just about everything that we say and they can even repeat some of our words, but it's not their language. So repeating our words seem difficult and unnatural for them. I don't know what to call their language, and I wish I paid better attention to it, but I did understand a couple of their words, the ones they use most often. A lot of the time when they talk to each other, it can sound really scary and aggressive. They have these booming, powerful voices, and they can talk really fast a lot of the time. It can be interesting to listen to them talk to each other, but it's hard to tell how they're feeling if you listen to them talk, because the way they talk makes them sound like they're upset even when they're not. My girlfriend asked me how did I sleep at night if the Bigfoot howl at each other through the nighttime. Well, I guess it's something that you just get used to. At least I did. We would hear them, but it didn't bother us. They do have really booming voices, though, and their howls can travel for miles. Someday, if you like, I can tell you about a couple of cool times that I had with a tree person that I called Gaz. I called him Gaz because he kept saying that word over and over. I didn't know exactly what it meant, but I guess that it meant friend or something like that, so that's why I called him that. We never called them Bigfoot. My family calls them tree people, or sometimes the night people. My dad and grandparents called them howlers. The tree people that lived near us went to bed or rested from just before sunrise until late in the morning or early in the afternoon. If you were keeping track of such things, you'd notice that just before the sun was about to come up, the woods would turn quiet. 
But that's not a rule. They can be just as different in their habits as we can be. Dogmen were out there, too, but thankfully they almost never came around our house. We called them bog devils, and we'd hear them out there howling sometimes. They didn't sound anything like the tree people, but their howls could carry almost as far. We didn't really know too much about them, and we stayed away from them if we did spot one. I'd say that we feared them more than anything else in those woods. We didn't trust them, not at all. I think that the tree people kept them away. I don't think that they wanted them where their home was. I know that the tree people didn't fear them at all. In fact, I think that the bog devils feared them. When I was about nine or ten, there was a battle nearby that we heard going on for hours one day. And that's a whole story by itself. Then there were the tiny people, and to me, they were the most mysterious ones of all. I don't really know what they are, but they look very close to people, except that they're really tiny. They don't all look the same, so maybe they're not all the same thing. I've seen a couple of the large ones, and even more of the really tiny ones. They have their own language, too. Everything that lived in the deep woods has their own language, but I also think that most of them understood everything that we said. My father and grandfather always told me that the tiny people were fae, but everything that I've been taught came from old stories that were passed on from older generations, so I don't know what parts were true or weren't. The larger little people were probably only about a foot high, and I don't know what the reason was, but my family always called them potato people. I only saw those larger ones two times in my life. I'd been warned that they can be hostile, so I just froze when I spotted them and I let them pass through before I moved or made noise. I saw more of the really small little people. Most of the ones I saw were less than half the size of those larger ones. The smallest one I ever saw wasn't even as tall as the length of my hand. I'm pretty sure that the really tiny people are mostly night people. I don't remember ever seeing them until around sundown time. Over the years, I saw those tiny ones a bunch of times, but it wasn't every day. Most of the time, I guess they were hidden. But just because I didn't get to see them doesn't mean they weren't there. Since they were so tiny, you could miss them real easily. I'd bet anything that most people have walked right past the tiny people and never saw them. I'm pretty sure I did when I lived out there. Even though I grew up in those woods, I believe that there are people or creatures that I never saw or even knew were nearby. The deeper that you're in the woods, the more you can see, but only if you're in the right place at the right time. The tiny people also have abilities, just like the tree people. Their abilities might be a little different than the tree people, but not less valuable to them. I talk about some of this stuff with my girlfriend, but I avoid talking about it with everyone else, because it's always the same. Most people never spent a single day where I was born, but they're the experts about the deep woods. I just can't deal with that. I'll be the first one to tell you that even though my family has lived on the homestead for generations, there's a whole lot that we don't know. So, not to be a jerk about it, but people who've been living in the city, they don't know anything. I don't mean any disrespect to anyone at all, but before someone tries to convince themselves or others that they have all the answers about all the things that haven't been proven to us, they need to ask themselves how many nights of complete darkness in the deep woods could they get through? I've spent thousands of nights in the deep woods, and I don't have all the answers. Thank you kindly, Abraham. Okay, guys, that's it for tonight, but I'll see you in a few days. Have a great night, everyone.